is going to be generally in the lights, right? Generally in the lights heading towards the dark. So maybe a slightly darker, maybe more desaturated, but distinctly lighter, remember? Got to have good value space in this painting. A lighter stroke right over there. Have it nice and evocative. Big stroke. Right over there. And the same value I find in a couple of other places in the painting. I see a little bit of it up top over here in the, in the forehead. And I see a little bit of this over here near the cheek. I see a little bit of that value being revealed. So we make a couple of marks over there. Even further than that, again, this is the idea. This is where reuse is so important because I got a color that I liked in the color space. And now I can look everywhere else in the painting. Where else do I have this color? Where else do I see a trace of this color? And I can start applying that in those areas. And it's going to save me a bunch of time. It's going to help me develop my canvas much, much quicker. And there's such a value in that. So, so important to be able to do that. So indeed, we do do that. Right? We do get that uh, somewhere in the way. I think this purple is indeed working a lot better than the, um, the green we chose initially when we had nothing on the canvas. Uh, maybe I'll double down over here. I'm going to double down, meaning I'll make an invested uh, change to my painting uh, by having a lot, a lot more value. And I'll bring in that purple right there. And we'll see if you like that change. Remember, it's really important for us to be nimble at this stage. We can't just, you know, do whatever we want. But at the same time, um, we need to evaluate whether things look good or not. If they don't look good, we should be ready to change it. I'll bring the same purple up here. Again, area of, I'm sorry, the zones of the face. So this is a redder zone. It's going to be much redder in this area, a lot more blood in that area. So I'm going to tone this value up with a bit more red in it. I light that slight little palm shadow right over there. Near the cheek, this is an area of subsurface scattering. So I want to introduce some red back in there. But it's an area that is heading from the light into the shadow, creating the subsurface. So the subsurface value over there. And subsurface is a great topic to study. If you want to add more color to your face, it's just a super, super interesting topic to study over there. I'm going to throw in this red for the subsurface right over there. And since I have this red value in my hand, in my pocket, I'm going to start layering this. Remember, these are not going to be my final, my final colors for, um, for the face. This is simply establishing local color, establishing what could potentially go there. And whatever I do like uh, from this whole process, I'm going to keep. And I'm going to really double down on it. But it's very difficult for me to like mentally think about every single color that's going to go in here. It's going to be very much harder for me to kind of establish that uh, because I have very little experience uh, mixing and then painting based on mix. I very much try to find my colors as I paint. That's just how I do it. But there are so many ways of doing it. And I encourage you to find one that really works for you. So the yellows in this painting, I'm going to start right over here and see how it works. It's okay. It's, uh, it's about as light as I want it to be. But I feel like it's a bit, it's a bit too strong. I mean, based on personal taste, a little, bit too, a little bit too much towards the yellow. So let's bring it down a little bit more. Bring it over there. And I think that kind of fits a bit better. To me personally, I'm not entirely sure. I do want this color to coordinate well with the colors down here. So I guess in that sense, it makes a, a good, good amount of sense. But I think what's going to really help balance this whole idea out is adding back that red the subsurface because there's blood on, underneath these cheeks that blood is going to have an effect so we're currently in the area of lights and indeed because of the red in the cheek we're going to have a light maybe even a pinkish value over here on the cheek and i have this value over there and i kind of like how that looks is there anywhere else now the big question right is there anywhere else we can put that value again i keep asking the question because it's important to ask the tip of the nose for, for, for instance we can maybe add a little bit of that pink back in the tip of the nose right over there Maybe some of this orange on the side can go on side of the nose. How do I know where to reuse? Some of it's observation and some of it's logic. So if a plane is similar, if I have a similar plane in a few areas, so a plane is pointed towards a particular direction. And when I say plane in drawing, a plane basically means like an oriented surface. So everything has a structure, meaning it has sides, and each side is pointed in a direction. We just call that a plane in general. Uh, in in most, uh, most people that talk about the, the specifics of art, We'll use the word plane. So that's what the plane means. So that means that some of these surfaces are pointing in the same direction because that's how the face is, right? Like some things are just pointed in the same way. Like for example, the top of your upper lip is pointing upwards, right? The top of your chin is pointing upwards. The top of your nose is pointing upwards. The top of your brow is pointing upwards. That's just how the skull is shaped, right? That's how the muscle on top of the skull is shaped as well. So we can make these conclusions. And if I know that, then maybe it's easier for me to find a bit more of a correlation. Even if I don't see it on my reference, I'll be able to think about it myself in my own painting. Things like that. I'm throwing a saturated value over there. It's heading to be a little bit too cool. I need to remember this idea that this is being lit by a warm light. So every stroke that happens in the light 
needs to somehow relate to that warm idea. I don't want to go back into that cool idea. I want to remain in my warm idea. So I'm going to have to revise my stroke a little bit more. I'll give myself a little bit of leeway here when, uh, when I'm choosing colors. That, that, that's something that's going to be my final color over here. Like I said, not final color, I'm sorry, my final value for my uh, underpainting. A nice solid stroke there. Just building it up ever so slowly. And I'm thinking very strongly about every region. Like every region I'm making the, I'm trying to make the case. Why would I want to put this color here? Does it make any sense to put that color here? And that's really how we think about it in this kind of method, right? Because I want to be swiftly heading towards my conclusion. I want to head towards that final, that final painting. And in, in that regard, really important to just keep considering how the painting is developing, considering exactly what the impact of the stroke is. So with each one of these strokes, I'm trying to determine how a particular oriented surface is responding to the light, and a particular plane is responding to the light. The light, by the way, if you're ever wondering how to find the light in a painting, just look at where the shadows are, and then just kind of recreate it from there. So the bottom of the, um, the, the neck over here, right? Bottom of the chin and neck, shadows heading that way. So let's go this way. So this is very valuable information because it tells me a lot of things. Because if the light's heading that way, that means that this plane over here, that's going to be really light. It's going to be a light plane. I'm not going to make that change right now. I'm not going to make this change right now, but this is the change that's going to happen. Why is that? It's because the light's heading from that direction. It's heading downwards. Heading and it's hitting this little nose over there. And even if I don't see it clearly in my reference, this has got to be, it's got to be my painting. Okay? Because it's going to strongly kind of indicate to the viewer exactly where this is coming from. Oh, you know what happened? You know what happened? My my stream crashed. The what? Which walked hard there for 30 seconds. I tried sketching something possible. James no lie, I'm throwing in the towel. I need to develop progress before I attempt. Okay, I'm sorry guys. I didn't realize the channel was not working. Jade Ross, how's it going, dude? You doing okay? And you're here, welcome. <laughs> I love that email. Sorry about that, guys. Is it gone again? Is it, is it F still, guys? I, I, I don't know. I don't have a. I don't have this monitor right now. It says I'm live. Okay, cool. Nice. Sorry about that. I didn't realize. Yeah, my chat was uh, was disconnected. I had no re I had no idea. All right. Well, I'm glad you guys stay with me. I guess. Last thing I had is a follow by Barata Toxica. Well, anyway, we're developing this painting slowly but surely, and it's going okay. I can maybe minimize my OBS now. I was like, people aren't saying anything. I guess they're really interested in painting today. <laughs> Andy, how's it going, buddy? For the hair over here, I want something to, to kind of contrast, not just in terms of value, but also in terms of the, the color. So I'm going to have the eyebrows here be something like a deep purple. Uh, not that, though. That's a little bit strange. That. That's heading to somewhere where I want to go. Maybe I'll make a bold statement with this. Maybe I'll make a bold statement. Cool. Just, just a notion of what's going to go there in the future. Again, not strongly thinking about local value. I'm sorry, not strong, strong, strong thinking about the final value in these areas. But again, we're building up towards it. Right? These occlusions over here on the nose, they're going to be very, very strong. They're going to be very strong, very red, very saturated. Let's build up towards that. Let's develop the underside of the nose really quickly with a couple of strokes. I want to have a nice subsurface deep red color over here on the side. Now let's bring it more towards the red. I have this color over there, and I want to have a similar color, not so much, maybe a bit more, um, a bit more yellow in there. 
the bottom of the nose, right over there. And also want to have a little bit of a form shadow. The form shadow goes cooler, so hit it with a bit of deset, fill out that shadow. Slowly building up that nose. The ball of the nose catches some light, so we must ind indicate the ball of the nose. A bit of light, light, light just like that. And then you can throw a highlight on there. It's a second. And joining a John Rio studies, really getting that painting impression so well. Thank you, Engineer. The right side of the face is catching more light on average than the left side. Right? So I'll get what, what is light on the left side, and I'm going to update that value for the right. Okay? Because I want a value that um, indicates the LR cartilage as well as the side of the nose. The side of the nose goes a bit more towards the ochre yellows. And up here, I have a lot of light. I have a lot of light to kind of contend with. So we're going to have to start etching into that. So the light itself is going to be quite warm. So we pick a nice warm color and we begin painting with it. We'll start with a nice solid statement here. So we desat it. Um, it's okay. I think over here, I can I can head a little bit more in this direction, I think. A nice solid stroke, I think. There. And for the side of the nose, I want to bring it more into the ochre. This side actually remains quite bright. Remains quite bright right here. Did you have any classes today, Engineer? I'll think about the edges in a second. It's gonna happen eventually in this painting, but not right now. Right now we don't think about the edges just yet. I gotta think about how saturated I want this light as well. In the reference, it's not very saturated. Oh, also my timer's not running. Uh, it's not very saturated. Um, I could choose to make it saturated. I could have this kind of color on the space. Which is, there's no problem in that. Now the question is, do I have enough saturated statements on my canvas to justify this? I haven't put the lips in, and I can make the lips quite saturated. But I always want to have one standout, like, oh, this is like a really standout color on this painting. Like, for example, it's the blue in the hair on that one. It's the, um, it's a very saturated, I think, red on this one. Have this session on the hair on the other one so i kind of want to have a statement somewhere so it's a bit of a choice uh, maybe eventually i will choose indeed to de to desaturate i think i'll keep the redness in the lips as, as much as i do like that color i think it's beautiful we'll, we'll keep it a little bit a little bit more down low and i can always update it later on if i feel like it something like that i think is fine okay so we're getting there i want a slightly more ochre so the the values near the hair tend to kind of go a little bit towards the hair. So this is going to be some slightly desaturated ochre values to fill out the form right over there. I think that is sufficient in that particular area. Bring out the form forehead. And this also makes sense with the uh, whole, we talked about the whole idea of um, areas of color, right? The zones of color on the face. So the forehead is usually anyway quite yellow uh, according to that whole idea. So. It's okay for us to make it indeed yellow. I'm going to give a little bit of a note with a hard brush here to say that there is indeed going to be some hair right there. That shadow, I'm going to pull it more towards the cool, most likely. Maybe it's going to be a D star shadow, like that. No lecture today. We have one super early on Tuesday. Just deliver the remaining homework. Oh man, all of those, uh, all of those finished clean line works. Jesus Christ. No wonder you're exhausted. It's been crazy. Yeah, good for you. Making those deadlines. For the hair, hair starts, I mean, I interpret the hair as this crazy kind of ochre green, but I want to bring some of these lighter tones in here. So for the bottom, for the bottom of the hair, let's bring in something like almost like a straw kind of desat yellow. Something like that, I think. Mm, it looks too dead. It looks too dead. So there needs to be a temperature difference, a, a stronger temperature difference. So I need to go one way or the other. Hmm. I like the green here, but let's make it a bit more of an angry green. Okay, that gives me some room to work with, not too much, but some. Also, I do want to kind of figure out what this dark is going to be. This dark, I'm going to just interpret it like this. Just a really simple solution there. Dark and cooler. Hmm. 
that will work well with the palette. A little bit too far removed for it to be a local, you know? A bit too far removed. So I'm gonna have to tone that down. So now that works a little bit better. Meaning that the green doesn't, it doesn't make too much sense for the green to go into that color too much. Like it's a bit too far away. One of the characteristics that I see in Rayo's art is that he uses the proportion, proportionally very big brushes. Do you think it's beneficial to start digital painting to follow this type of practice digitally? Using big brushes? 100%, yeah, I think it's very beneficial. Like this, the brushes that I, that I, I use are quite, uh, are quite large as well. Because compared to the canvas, they're, they're really large, but I paint really far away, so they're just average size. But like this, this single brush is bigger than like the entirety of the eye socket uh, for my what I'm painting right now, so I do recommend it, yeah. Let's develop something else. So like I said before, there's always coordination in, in any painting. So once I determine that there is indeed a value that I like, like that light value that's pointing upper left, what else is pointing upper left? The maw of the mouth, right? So I can get to paint this little value over there immediately to show the maw of the mouth, revealing that little form right there. Okay, what about the chin? The chin's also gonna get some attention there. The chin's gonna get a bit of desat, maybe a little bit redder. I'm gonna get uh, a little bit of this light value on the chin. That one looks a little bit too dead, uh, I don't know, a bit too dead right there. Let's bring it into a bit more of a warm, so we have a bit of color contrast. I like that, that's much better. So slowly structurally revealing, revealing all the features. Okay, and again, this is just a local, we're just revealing the locals. We're gonna really get into this um, full force once we start to um, do the final colors. Also it's raining, so if my stream dies, I apologize. Got some of the values. And right there. This is really fun so far for me. Very, very educational. BT, your darling babe. How's it going? Get the, um, the lips in here. The lips are gonna be, I see a hint of pink in there. I don't think I have any strong statements in 